David Smith here with another Flip Classroom Math video. A few tips before we start. Remember that you can slow down or speed up the playback if that helps you follow along. You can also pause the video at any point to catch up with your notes or try the problems before I explain them. Lastly, you could turn on the captions and read my words going along below the bottom of the screen. Today's topic, showing regions with Venn diagrams. So this is a little bit more general. We're going to get out of the nitpicky pieces about what's, what's in each of the number sets and talk about these concepts of unions and intersections and complements and things like that. But there's a few things we need to get out of the way uh, before we can go ahead. Um, there's these two set identities that I want to share with you. And whenever you see an identity in mathematics, this is something that always holds true. And in this case, these identities will always hold true for any sets within a universal set. Okay? So, let's think about this first one. The union of set A and its complement. Okay? So the union of everything in set A with everything that's not in set A. What am I going to put there? This is the thinking question. If you thought, well, that's got to be the universal set, you're right. Okay? Because everything that's in the circle that's set A with everything that's inside the rectangle but not in the circle, that's the complement, everything that's not in set A, then together these two things are going to make the universal set. Okay? So that's our first identity. And this is true no matter what. This is something that's universally true with sets. Okay, let's take a look at this one. This is the intersection of set A and the complement of set A. So remember what an intersection is, all elements that are in both sets. So what are you going to put here in general if we have set A and its complement, what is in the intersection of those two sets? Pause the video and think about this if you haven't already come up with the answer. Okay, so if you thought, well, there's nothing. This is everything in A. This is everything not in A, so if the intersection of these two things, there isn't anything. So this is the null set. Okay? So the intersection of every set and its complement is always the null set. Another thing we call this is the empty set, because there's nothing in it. Okay. So these are two identities. There's two more in the book. If you're interested about them, you can dig in there and take a look at those. Disjoint sets. This is a fancy word for mutually exclusive. So two sets are disjoint, which is mutually exclusive, if they share no elements. So if two sets don't share any elements, then they're considered disjoint or mutually exclusive. So if two sets, A and B, are disjoint, then what's their intersection? Well, if you thought, again, like that problem, if they're disjoint, if they don't have any shared elements, then their intersection is going to be nothing, or the null set. Okay? So one example drawn from close to your life would be, um, let's look at a high school filled with boy students and girl students. If set A is the boys, set B is the girls, those two sets are disjoint. They don't share any members, so the intersection of the two sets would be the null set. Okay, so let's use some of these concepts to create some shaded Venn diagrams, which is the bulk of the exercises that you'll be working through in this particular lesson. So this title here is Creating Shaded Venn Diagrams. So we're going to do three of those. Um, here's what I want you to show. One, two, three. Three examples. I've already put some blank, some unshaded Venn diagrams ready to go. So you can see from that that we're sharing, we're comparing two sets, two subsets of our universal set, and we're going to shade some regions. Okay, so number one, let's create a shaded diagram showing elements in A or B, but not in both. Okay, so A or B, this is a little bit of logical thinking, a or B means that it could be either in A or in B. Either way is good. It just can't be in both of them. So this little region here, that's the intersection. That is both. 
So we can't shade that. And then the outside area is not in A or B. So we can't shade that. So all that's left of us is to shade the A's that are not B and shade the B's that are not A. So this center area is unshaded, but the A's and the B's are shaded. So this diagram satisfies that request. Let's move on. Okay, this one's a little more complicated. Just give it to you in notation. The intersection of the complement of A and B. So it has to be all the things that are not in A that are also in B. Okay? So here's something to think about. Not A is this area of B plus all the outside area, right? That's not A. So we could shade everything in this diagram except for the A circle. That would be the complement of A, okay? But this is an intersection of that with B, okay? So it's not going to, this outside area can't be shaded because it's not in B. This part of B can't be shaded because that is in A. We want the intersection of the complement of A. So all that leaves us with is this, is the B's that aren't in A. So that's a shaded graph for the intersection of the complement of A and B. Okay? Now this last one is the hardest of these three. If you're feeling bold, pause the video, see what you get. Okay, let's take a look at that. So now, instead of intersection like this one, we have union, and then instead of the complement of A, we just have A, and we have the complement of B. So this is the union. So it's the combination, the adding together of A and the complement of B. Okay? So it's all of A. So this whole A circle, including the intersection, that's going to be shaded. And then the complement of B is also shaded. Now, thinking again about complements, complements of B is everything in this diagram that's not within the B circle. So it's all this outside area, but just not what's in B. But now we have a union. So we're adding all of A to the complement of B. So one way to think about this one is what's not shaded? That would be the B stuff right here. Not the B that's shared with A, because that's also in A. So that's going to get dropped in. Remember, we're doing a union, so it combines these two things. So the only thing we can't have shaded is what's in B that's not in A. So this graph would be shaded kind of everywhere. Into there, into there, but not in the B zone. So this graph has got the whole thing shaded except for these B's. Now that you've finished the video, take a moment to jot down any questions that you have so you can bring them to our next class and get some help. You can also watch the video again to perfect your understanding. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button down below. And if you'd like to help me grow my YouTube channel, please click subscribe.